Good morning. Will God turn back from punishing his people? Long passage today, Jeremiah 4, 23 to 29, straight to it. I beheld the earth, and indeed it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and indeed they trembled, and all the hills moved back and forth. I beheld, and indeed there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens had fled. I beheld, and indeed the fruitful land was a wilderness, and all its cities were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken. I have purposed and will not relent, nor will I turn back from it. The whole city shall flee from the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. They shall go into the thickets and climb up on the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man shall dwell in it. A pretty grim item here today. Now, we've previously seen in Jeremiah how God's people have, have totally crossed the line. God is sending judgment, and he will not relent. And the language here in Jeremiah is, is fascinating. Did you notice some of these interesting pieces here? When God sends judgment, the earth is without form and void. Hebrew, tohu, vavo, uh, tohu vavohu, is the Hebrew. We go back to Genesis 1, the second verse in the whole Bible. Genesis 1, verse 2. And the earth was without uh, form and void, tohu wavohu. It's, this is Genesis creation language. Uh, we also see other pieces from Genesis chapter 1. You know, the skies are black, there's no stars, the land is empty, uh, these kinds of things here. So this is, this is God is, is putting to Jeremiah this vision of his anger, his wrath being so extreme that he, he's, he's unmaking the creation. It's, it's really quite fascinating. It's a, it's a very grim picture. Israel's had many opportunities, but they've been ridiculous, and now God is going to come and just just, just totally uh, turn their world, um, very literally, upside down and inside out. But there's a promise of hope here. We see it at, uh, at verse 27, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. There's a promise right there, even in his, his right uh, indignation. He is not going to abandon them. He is going to give them a, a strong chastening. They're going to get the, the really supreme uh, treatment here, but he wants to bring them in the line. He's not destroying them. He's trying to bring them back. And so he's, he's dipping again deep into his toolbox. And these are going to be very extraordinary times, life-rending times for his people. But he wants to bring them back. Keep, keep your eyeball on that focus, on that, on that promise right there. And all the... Uh, destruction and all the the reverse creation, the, the tearing down of everything, there's hope. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for watching over your people. We have to thank you, Lord, for chastening Israel. They are yours, and because you love them, you chasten them. Uh, and they are we, they are us, Lord. Uh, we ourselves also surely need some chastening, hopefully not like Judah. But bless us, Lord, do whatever is needful, uncreate the whole world around us if that's what it takes to bring us to your side. Thank you for, for being willing to hear our prayer. We ask this prayer not because of our goodness. We've asked it because of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, he works for us. Even his punishments help us to return to him. God be with you today.